for them to hear us, but we might get a little excited. So uh, we'll be jamming out, and I'm going to switch over so I can see the comments. They are starting. They are starting now, so we're going to transition into the game. All right, Bobby, you're familiar with this meta. You've been playing all day yep. and yesterday. Yep. Uh, tell me a little bit about this matchup and how you expect it to go. So we're best of three. Winner of two is going to move on to the finals. Right. Um, what's going on in this matchup, do you think? So Nick's deck looks to overwhelm with indirect damage from BT1 and triple zero, and he has two climate sensor arrays. And um, hold on a second. The judge is tapping me. I'm streaming. OK, sorry. Um, he has two climate sensor arrays um, that's going to let him, if he gets ahead on damage, um, essentially give, deal himself two damage to deal, because of triple zero, his opponent three damage. So he'll be making a two damage for three damage trade, and that's what the deck is. It's all about like making um, like value trades while you're suiciding. And he has things like bubble shield to keep his indirect damage um, from killing his characters. And then Jordan also has witch magic to keep his guys alive. So it's going to be a really interesting push and pull. Obviously, with the Mandalorian Super Commando, the power action is to deal damage when you play uh, an upgrade on it. So he's going to be needling um, Nick's deck, and Nick's deck is going to be needling. Uh, there's going to be a lot of needling back and forth, just tiny one damage here and there. Probably going to have to pay attention to what we're picking up. Looks like Nick played um, BT1 to start, which is pretty optimal. So if you had to do an odds meter I like doing it. Sorry, looking at his hand here, what's that? Uh, friends in low places? He just friends in low place to see a force rend, a force illusion, a chance cube, a armored plating, and a backup muscle. Backup muscle is going to be really good in this matchup. Very good. Um, unfortunately, none of those cards were events, so Nick whiffed there. But that's still pretty nice because you know that your opponent doesn't have any control cards. Yep, so absolutely. So you're free reign at this point. Roll after him. Open for a resource or a discard, maybe. Yeah, de that's definitely it. And he's got the resource there. That's going to be free money. Amber already has two damage on her from the super commando um, ability. Oh, and I guess he already rolled in a Super Commando and resolved damage. The backup muscle's down, so the damage is starting. So this is the interesting part of the deck, right? Oh, well, he didn't roll BT after all. Oh, double blanks. With all snow. So Probably when he... want to focus there? Yeah, you, you always want to focus with Snoke in this deck. The idea is to like get a bunch of um, up supports out and then focus them all with Snoke, especially when we know that our opponent doesn't have a uh, any mitigation. Yeah. Um, so the, the resource there in Afro is nice. Um, but again, he's under no pressure to get his dice removed. What happened? The Which is super nice, because you can get droid. a lot of dice on the table and use your cards for rerolls at that point, right? Exactly. exactly. So, that's uh, I love, when you're in friends of the places, even for a miss like that, yeah, it's I'm the, totally fine. The hand it. knowledge is so good. Oh, see, so that's triple zero, um, which means anytime Nick deals himself indirect, it's going to deal um, an extra indirect to his opponent. All right, here comes Mom. My Tal's are revealing a force illusion on top of deck, switching to another two damage, so that's four damage showing. Yep, and after's already got three. And you have the Super Commando deck. I played it against a version in a trilogy event, and even there, it was able to do a lot of damage, like very quick. It stacks up. Nick's gonna have to get to the mid game and um, hope that um, Jordan runs out of steam and that Nick has set up his his damage engine. And again. Nick is the Afro player. Yes, so, Nick's on and the left. He's, he's the your uh, teammate. Right? Yeah, he's a teammate. Uh, we get the Hyperloop Hyper 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 right shirt. Um, but I mean, he's already taken seven damage to zero, um, so things are looking rough. And he started with the shield, so. Yeah, but at the same time, if you look, he's got uh, Droid out, the tech team, and he's also got five unresolved dice. Yep. So this is, oh, he got rid of one of the arrays. He, well, the thing is, he's so far behind on damage now that he probably can never profitably um, do Use damage that? with the array. Yeah. yeah. He's going to have to rely on snoking that battle droid die for three indirects. Right, he got to, two to focus there in. with snow. Yep. So, and another focus too. So he's going to be able to get whatever he wants. Um, yeah, the question is what's Nick's last card? If it's a vehicle, I think Nick feels really good. If it's not, he's going to be way behind going into round two. So if it's a vehicle, the essential goal there, somehow we removed a die? I don't it's, know. Uh, so they're playing on four Danaxes, which gives all his characters okay, guardian. Okay, cool. I didn't notice the battlefield. That's an important, <laughs> important moment. All right, so, so there's the... eight damage. Yeah, but took the resources, so he must have something, or he's getting ready to play something big next round. Oh, and Aphra's just dead. Dead round one, that's... That's 11 damage out of that deck round one. That's, that's a lot. That's what that Talzin Mando deck can do, because you can get two free damage from the Mandos. You have Talzin fixing a die. We still have a chance cube out, so who knows what he's going to end up playing here. Looks like we have Snoke plus the battle droid at plus two on the indirect. But All right, so taking Afra four, off the but board the, yeah. and only doing five. Afra is the card engine too. Every time you get an indirect damage dealt to yourself, she draws yeah. you a card. So without that engine, he's going to be hurting. Mm. And what, what what does the removal look like in that kind of a deck? 
It's very light. Um, he's Is got it like two the zero cost removal options. He's got two. He doesn't like you. Two hidden motive, and he also has two crash landing. Um, crash landing removes the die. You still get the damage dealt, but it's indirect. So you trigger um, triple zero. You trigger Afra, and he has the bubble shield out. So now he can turn base damage like um, the mother talisman's two range per, per se into. Um, indirect damage and put it on the bubble shoot. And this is a, this is a really um, rough start for Nick because like you're looking at the board, and he did get a bubble shield and two and a tech team and BT down. But like Snow gonna battle droid versus these three characters? It's not. It's not looking good. I don't have. I mean, <laughs> I hate to be defeatist on the string, but um, I'm sure Nick doesn't feel great. But Nick also has pulled some games out of nowhere today. Um, so I'm not, I'm not counting him out. He's a really good player. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the thing about Destiny, right, is that you can always roll one. Yeah, you can always so roll one. It, it reminds me a lot of X-Wing in that way, where you're never truly out of the game until it's over. And um, Nick's got six resources, so he can drop he can drop a Hailfire Droid in his hand. Um, it's a shame after has gone. But it might fun to enjoy. Yeah, I think he'll have to deal with that. So we got push. a force push. That's, That's a good one. Special for two blanks, or it's got two, two range it's side. It's got a two honestly. range and a two discard side, which is really, yeah, really good. Yeah, I mean, good. that's just an incredible die. I think that a lot of people undervalued that early, and I'm really into the villain blank thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that a lot from a. It's a really good card. All right, so here comes the. That is the Hellfire. Card. Hellfire, which means um, Jordan's going to take a damage, and because it's a droid, Nick's going to be able to roll it immediately. Funny, I was going to ask you what the window meter before the first turn was, and now it's way too late for me to get an accurate gauge of the window meter. This this one's tough. The, Nick has very little mitigation in his deck. Two hidden motive, two he doesn't like you, two crash landing, and that's it. That's really crazy considering the deck made it all the way to the top four, right? It's it a, just overwhelms it, it's you. It's a suicide stuff. deck, so like it, it it's willing to take damage. It just needs to make profitable trades. As long as it's dealing damage and it can deal a lot of damage. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And that sensor array, what an awesome... I can't imagine early on in a tournament like this, if my opponent dropped that kind of a card, yeah. I know... You'd have to read it twice. I'd have to read it twice. <laughs> and I know this is either a serious threat or, or it's going to be an easy match. You're, you're playing not, a jabroni, yeah. It's not going to be close. Like, he's either going to blow me out because he's that much better than me, or he's... It just doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. Well, Nick's a mad scientist, so um, I guess what we have a little downtime. This is how Nick's, Nick wins. He sets up to... Um, to have you at about five health left at the start of your turn, he takes the battlefield. He claims early. He activates BT to force right. your opponent to take three, and then he, and then he'll activate like um, the climate sensor ray to make the opponent take three. Yeah. And they've done so. Even if they activate their character before, they'll take five damage indirect before they resolve their dice. So as long as Nick leaves them at five, about five health he left, just he just automatically wins that as long as he starts. Reminds me a lot of uh, Steven's Gungan deck. He had that. Uh, that battlefield where you do an indirect for every one of your defeated characters. Yep. And he gets you if he gets you down to six, right. he claims he claim for three, and then his first action next round is claim. It's just like uh, that's how Mill wins with the discard card. Yeah. If you get down to two cards against Mill and a Mill mirror, you're just dead. And so like what uh, I mean I feel kind of the same way about Arinda with Throne Room. Mm -hmm. Where if you can get a three, you know, like an heirloom on the board, she can just do four at will by a claim, and then she can claim again for four. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny that, like, Heirloom, we thought when we saw Dagger of Mortis that Heirloom would be, like, a medium card, but because because of Arinda, Heirloom's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's, but you could do it with Tactical Mastery, so they don't even have a chance. That's crazy. It's crazy, Tim. All right, so... Here comes Smoke, what, rolling blanks. What would you put the win, win meter at right now at this moment? Does Nick um, actually still have a chance here? I would put Nick at about 5% to win. Hey, 5% is greater than zero. I, I mean, think Nick is really, really good. I've, I've made some 5% bets in my life. <laughs> Nick's won in Magic on a Mulda 4, so I believe in him. All right, revealing Force Wave. Not going to be so useful by the time <laughs> that gets into play. No, he won't need it anymore. But see, here's that Force Push. Rolling two damage out of nowhere. Like, did he? Did, that's not what he focused with the Talzin. No, I think he's picking right now what to focus with Talzin. Yeah, gotta love that force push die is really good. Yeah, I mean it's just got there it is. So he's pushing it to the double blank. Oh, interesting. Uh, the special. I don't know that it works. Playing defensive, yeah. But I'm also an aggressive player, so I would have probably switched to the non talisman Yeah, non -talism I, I think dice. it's especially weird because he has Ford and Axes on the battlefield, so that he can um, he can move di he can basically move damage at will where he wants it. So yeah. I think it's an it's an interesting choice. Push. Yeah, especially. I mean, you. I mean, you want to step on the jugular, right? You want to. You want I, to put on the gas pedal, not I, let off. I also understand that, like, if you roll all your stuff in and then re-roll, 
um, and you leave that out, that like it's going to be almost impossible for Nick to actually do damage to you. Right. And if you just don't give him a chance to do damage, you're probably going to win this game. So I th it seems conservative more than anything else. And I'm fine. I just don't play that way. Yeah, so like Nick played um, Archangel to deal another indirect via the, the Hailfire. Um, can't see Nick's hand, but I know he has Probe. Yeah, and once this droid's off the table, Snook's ability's gone. Yep. And that's what I, I, I was played a store championship and I chose not to play Snow um, because of how much I don't like him in the end game one on one or one on three in this case. He really thrives in this three wide vehicle deck where even after his power action is gone, his dice are so good. Two indirect, two focus, one focus. Well, when you have a bunch of vehicles out, that focus actually matters at the end of the game. It gets you really far. Um, enough that as long as you got a little bit out of your characters, that he, I think he makes up for it. Plus, he's 13 points. It's just he the value's too points. good. <laughs> so it looks like he resolved that force push die. Um, he can't blank triple zero because triple zero doesn't have blanks, nor does Hailfire, which is a really interesting um, mechanic in the meta right now. There's a bunch of cards, like I played Force Jump all week. And you can only turn things to blank. So when Triple Zero and Hailfire have no blanks, that that, that die doesn't do yeah. anything for you. Although Force Push might be to any side. It's any side, yeah. Because yeah. okay. you could technically, if you like had Force Speed, you could turn it to a three and throw it at them, like Force the result. It's been a while since I played it. Yeah. Also love seeing cards like Probe and Plus Quarters Assault coming back into the game. Oh, Probe's so huge. Always love those cards. We added Probe at the last minute. It was such a good add. It's just a, a super strong like anti card. Yeah, I mean, this is it's perfect in these Snoke decks because all he wants to do is focus, and, um, you know, you can't focus, you can't, like, reliably focus if you don't know what your opponent's hand is. Sure. So, right. Cuenca is just going for it. I mean, he's got to, right? Yep. Like, yeah, he's way behind. He has to make some. He has to make some moves. I've definitely been in that position where you start having to take those five, ten percent chances just because you're that far behind. I think. Um, I think if Nick can draw some crash landings uh, or some dangerous maneuvers to get some of that damage over to Snoke and the Bubble Shield, he's gonna be doing okay. Yeah, the Bubble Shield's helpful. And like, there is a lot of damage over on Jordan's side of the table, right? So we've got. It's stacking up. This yeah, is what Nick does. It stacks up. But the battle droid just went down. <clears throat> He's still got 12 health to chew through on Snoke. And a Hailfire and an Archangel. And I mean, Talzin's down to two right here. Um, is that a Force Illusion that just went down? Or is that a Shoto? It looks like a bottom of the Shoto. I don't, I don't he didn't, think he, he has Shoto, right? He didn't put the die out, so I assume it's a Force Illusion. It's got to be. Yeah, there's no die symbols over there, so it's got to yeah. be. That's going to make it annoying. But I mean, look, it's, yeah, he's got seven on Mom and four on the two Mandos, and he's got the battlefield, so he can now, um... Guardian? I guess he doesn't have to, but it could, it, there's some, if there's modified sides, there's not yeah, right there's now, not. but... So, not relevant, not but it's relevant better than his opponent It's good to, to, good to go through the motions and figure yeah, out where we are right. in the game state. Yeah, that's totally true. I think the same thing. I, if... Alright, so oh, man, here's the one. one. Things that's awesome. Card. With all, the thing about a lot of vehicle decks is, um, in the villain side, you don't have a lot of yellow dice, but BT and triple zero and Archangel, that makes that power action super live, and it's mitigation. Yeah. So Nick has a dangerous maneuver in his hand, um, which means if damage goes on to Snoke, he'll be able to move it to the bubble ship. That's really handy. So zero heal two card at this point. And deal one because of triple zero. Yeah. So this yeah. see this is the he's engine Nick's starting going. to start. Okay, this is starting closer than I thought. I think we're probably what 20, 25 percent. All right, I'll give him. I'll give him twenty. All right, we're, that's four Cause times. Because he's, we he's Nick Quenca, right former. Um, Magic National Champion. Total pro. It's cool to see really good players like wiggling their way out of a situation. Absolutely. And it's, a lot of times I've seen players give up way too early in a game. And like, it's just one good decision after another. And put yourself in the game. Give yourself yeah. a chance. So like, Nick's rolling, um, he rolled Archangel, so it lets him roll three vehicles at the same time. So that, that inundates brutal, right? with dice, and villain decks can't uh, mitigate a lot of dice at the same time. So I, I can't really tell. <laughs> I can't really tell what those are, but I'm guessing not a lot of damage. All right, because letting that chance cube bounce. Yeah, because it's like a one range blank. I feel like with Mother Talzin on this close to the brink of nine, that I would be very keen to activate her quickly. I guess she's got the Force Illusion, so she's a little safe. And um, Nick, Nick does have very few ways to do direct damage. 
um, I guess it, not knowing their list, right? It's like assuming that just something bad could happen. Like if he's rolls a focus here, does he have all in in his deck? Right. Like, can he actually get get yeah, there? And that's get, something you have to be aware of. Snoke makes all in really, really good. Yeah, and here she goes. I just feel like Ooh, holocron, holocron with. That's the risk. He's actually running. It looks like two holocrons and two chance cubes. So that's four even cost of cards in a thousand deck. Yeah, it's just the value is so good on. Um, having a zero cost upgrade for the super commando ability that it, it offsets yeah I don't think he has oh he has triple threat that's interesting just looking at the list doesn't look like any other evens none of the zero cost mitigation which is hard because there's a lot of really good zero cost mitigation cards this one he has very little mitigation here electroshock overconfidence yeah He's light, mitigation light. I mean, he does have like force throw, force ran. Yeah, it, it's in his it's in his um, abilities, but, but if you can't go off with holocron, then it's going to be an issue. Yeah, but his deck isn't really about controlling you; it's just doing more damage right. than you can. That's true, for sure. Obviously, he's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's. I mean, got playing flank. really well. Yeah, gut flanks, tap to Classic. smoke. Man, how how crazy is it going to be when that those first three sets disappear? It's going to be wild. It's going to be the Wild like West. Although every set's the, the Wild West. It really uh, is. They're doing such a good job, um, like revamping the meta every time. I'm a say. little worried about Mill right now being too good. Mill? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like on the other side of the bracket, we just have um, like Mill Mirrors. Yeah. Yeah, I remember talking to Jeremy a while back, and he was like, I want Will Mill to be a viable, but not like dominance. It felt but impressive fine. this weekend, yeah. but. We can talk about that playing. in the finals. But we'll talk about that in the uh, yeah, when break it, in between this game and the finals. Sure. There will be a mill deck in the finals for people who are yeah, just that's, joining that's us. Yeah, that's the other half of the mirror. It's a mill mirror. Hyper loop showing up with all the mill. Yeah, it was, it was really... And then, like, I wanted to play Quenka's deck. It's just I couldn't I couldn't master it. It's too mad scientist. All right, we saw that dangerous maneuver there onto the bubble shield. Yep. Dangerous maneuver onto the bubble shield makes... Um, that's some good value. Triple zero triggers makes him take a damage. See, look, I mean, look at this. Was, He's at eight three, health. six, seven, eight, plus a force illusion health. And like, we got some serious, I mean, he can do that, a lot of damage very quickly with this deck. And Snoke has that 11 health. So, I mean, if he draws into like, I mean, next round would be great if he, he could drop a force illusion onto Snoke or something. Yep, force illusion onto Snoke. And, and if he can get BT on the table. Yeah, Honestly, I mean, even that climate array shows up, the second climate array, he's ahead. That's what's crazy. He's ahead like, online. 10 plus the bubble shield is 11. He's ahead. Well, for now, there's four dice over here. So another interesting thing about the um, the force illusion is if he's able to get any other um, damage on Mother Talzin, you have to to be able to put indirect on yourself to force illusion it. You have to have that much health remaining. Um, so if he did like a four indirect from the uh, the hellfire or whatever, he couldn't put all four on Mother. He'd have to kill one of the Mandos, or you know, he'd have to one put two Mando, on the Mandos. Two on the Mandos, yeah. Well, I think he's going to hope for a reroll here and yep. some serious power damage. Power X. Let's go Slave One Power Action. This is like one of the best YOLOs in the game. Oh, man. I love it. Well, he's, it, so he's got his opponent on a blank, which means you can at least remove that die, right? Yeah. Because you reroll into a blank, you remove a die showing Yeah, or blank. that um, the Force Push Specials is zero, so oh, he can yeah, do that, that's too. that's great. Yeah, that's not even a YOLO. That's just a, that's like, a, yeah, a yeah. good play. It's like he's deciding. It's really great to see a uh, Slave One legitimately in the deck. I know. All right, looks like he got the shield side. So yeah, he, he needed that thousand yeah, He needed the two, but it's okay. He's okay. Well, he's still got a reroll, right? So that, but the force push is the annoying. force push is really, really bothering him. He doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with that. All right, looking for. He essentially needs to just roll into good damage, get him blanked, and roll again. Man, I'm not, I'm not certain. So that chance keep coming on and off every. That's a lot of free damage. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. I, I see it. It's really good. So if you're unfamiliar, every time you play an upgrade on those commandos, first time power action, right? Power yep. action. They, power action. They can deal the damage. So a chance cube, when you activate it, you don't pay for it. It bounces. So that gives you that upgrade to play every time. Yep. I'm not in love with the fact that he's not using power action tokens, so we don't know. We it's hard to track, right? If yeah. he's used them or not. For sure. They'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm sure they're on top of it. There's a judge watch in the game at this point in a big tournament like this. All right, so we got snow. Clear there it track. is. The oh, dip, there's the, the climate sensor array. Hope you played your uh, air conditioning bill. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, so, like, I mean, he's in a position to do this, man. Um, 
I'm a big Navy SEALs fan. That's a Navy SEALs call. Like, so obviously he's flaming, so he's going to have the battlefield. He can use the Archangel to get some serious dice in. Uh, you're going to go ahead and climb it away. I mean, he is So now he's treating it. two damage for three. He puts one on... Um, so he can't force solution off he, three he of that. Left. Yeah. No, he force solution three, but he can't. I don't think he understands that. I don't yeah, think the judge should know. Yeah. yeah. That's a bummer. Um, because the, the triple zero is a separate trigger. He can't assign all three indirect. They, they get assigned at different times. So he could only force solution two of that. Um, yeah, yeah I'll bummer. probably snag the judge in between games. Oh, uh, man, two more there. Yeah, that's tough. Um, you know, Nick's taking a chance with the Climate Center Ray. Yeah, I mean, again, that's where you come back to when you're down on odds. You've got to kind of take some swings in defense, so to speak. But he's got the battlefield, so he might he, he can um, he can do the Archangel roll Does to start the, the turn. Does the Ray do the damage to yourself or your opponent first? You first. That's the trade-off. So he's he can't but do it can, unless he you, finds the bubble shield. I was going to say, he can still find that bubble shield. He still dealt three damage, which is pretty nice. He didn't get it. Um, he did draw a dangerous maneuver, but that's not helping him other than... Um, he can cycle the dangerous maneuver back to just deal the same damage to himself to simply do a damage to him, to the opponent. Yeah, I feel like he's got to roll in all those vehicles here and hit. Yeah, and really represent some damage. And that's what he's doing. He's going to need some good rolls. Let's hope the Sith prophecy came true. The apprentice has become the master, Bobby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, looks like he's got six indirect showing. Is the Hellfire have a four indirect on there? Uh, I believe it's a three and a four for one, yeah. I mean, no, it's a two and a three. And a, um, two, three indirect, two range, three range for one. All right, Snoke has one health left. One health. And if, if the other Super Commando can do the damage, it's... He's got the cube in hand, right? Oh, he's got backup muscle. Oh, that's game. I think it's game. He's looking his cards over. you got to make sure nothing... You don't have any outs. Yeah. All right, so he's going to resolve here for a bunch of indirects. Thousand dead. Mando dead. Oh, it, maybe that was an armored plating. All right, there you have it. I'm yeah. pretty sure that Jordan just got game one. Jordan got game one, yeah, for uh, sure. So that means Nick is going to get a... Is it go by Nick? Yeah, Nick. Nick. Uh, he's going to get to choose the battlefield going into this next game. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go to game two. Um, so going into game two, do you think... Obviously, that was a really great opening for Jordan. Um, he got way ahead really early. He did 11 damage half for round one. That's pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, 11 damage from any deck on turn one is, even if it was indirect, would be aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. That's about as good. I can't imagine doing better damage than that in round one. <laughs> there are very, there's, you know, some weird Kylo lines can do that. Like Kylo Kylo's has a too. lot of damage. Uh, He's, that's a really good deck. It's just the health. The health is so, you know, 22 health is so last year. It's so yeah, awakened right? this meta. I mean, I think that's that's an interesting change we're seeing. We've even seen cards previous in the next set. The health seems to be going up. And I, I think that's a really great answer to extend the length of these games. Yeah. Um, that isn't changing the power curve of what's already out. But that also means that that's part, what I was going to say earlier about Awakenings rotating out is the cards in Awakenings that aren't characters see, still see a ton of play. But you'll notice that none of the characters on this table are Awakenings. Yeah. Or even that first cycle. That's true. They're not. Um, it's a new world. Yeah, and I think that's just something that, the, the, it's funny, of all the things to not be quite good enough, the characters seem to be, and there's some characters that float around, but it's, it's a lot the less characters. The thing is, the they were so overcosted, yeah. and now they're not. Well, yeah, they actually, they the top four, there's no Awakenings no characters. No Awakening cycle characters at all. Uh, and not only are they overcosted, but like, you can say they're right costed, they just don't have enough health. Yeah, they don't have enough health. I think a lot of them are overcosted. I think a lot of them are underpowered. I mean, as in any CCG, you're going to, going to mess some things up in the first sets. Not yeah. mess up exactly, but like you're going to want to make changes and you're going to want to make your cards stronger as people figure them out to beat the older cards. You're always going to have to have that power creep a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, and we're definitely seeing it. The cool thing about Destiny to me, though, is that like, with the rotation system, I'm not sure that like power creep is necessary as much as like just understanding the pace of the game. Because like the first two sets were designed before the game came out, from what they say. So like you can imagine trying to design those first two sets yeah. With none. Right. Yeah. Live With, data. Yeah. Without anything. And, you know, 
I mean, the game's doing fine without it, so I don't think it's necessary. All right, while we have a second here, I want uh, you to be able to give a quick plug, hyperloops.com. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think you guys are great. I read a lot of your content. Yeah. So what, uh, what is Hyperloops uh, for the people listening or watching that have no idea? The hyperloops.com is just a uh, Star Wars Destiny content creator website. We do daily articles. Um, we do a lot of videos for, like, Patreon subscribers. We have, like... Um, we're basically, we call ourselves like the Netflix of, of Destiny. We have tons of videos every day uh, or every week. And yeah, we just we just create free content and want people to get better at the game. So there's a lot of just articles and deck lists about how to get better. And what do you think is, the, if someone's watching this that's maybe, you know, you've made, you, you were what? You got third here last year? Second uh, here last second year. Last year. Last third year, at Worlds. Worlds uh, in that brutal Kylo 2 game uh, that you'll never forget. Nope, never. Uh, not only were you playing Kylo 2, which is tough for Sabine, but... Your dice were also as cold as ice. Yeah, anyway, it was a tough one. It was tough. You're top eight here, so you're obviously uh, pretty pretty all right in this game. Yeah, I feel what okay. Is, what do you think is the most important bit of advice you can give a newer player getting into Star Wars Destiny that, that dreams of getting to this point at like a Gen Con 2018? Uh, learning how to sequence your actions, and, and what I mean by that is like how to do things in certain orders. Right now, um, I like in any match, these guys are going to have to, like, you want to do damage to try and kill a character before they can kill your character. So sometimes you have to posture, and even though they're going to, like, mitigate, you have to put yourself in a position to um, either erase their character or get your dice mitigated, um, essentially so that you're not letting them do whatever they want and falling behind on actions. And if you fall behind on actions, like, that's when they can kill you before you have a chance to, to deal your to resolve your dice and kill them. Yeah, because killing a character before they get to resolve their dice exactly. is, is a huge swing. If, yeah. If you start the game with four dice in play, you know, two two dice removed before they can use them in a turn might be half the dice. Yeah. At exactly. that time of the game might be a third of the dice. That's, yeah. a, big, that's a big play. Yeah. So you, you just want to make sure you do your actions in the right yeah. order and, and try to know when to be the aggressor and when it's okay to mitigate dice. Sit back, control. All right. So thank Nick's you for that choosing his battle. Advice. I was going to say, so Nick lost the first game to Jordan. Uh, Jordan is on the right. Nick is on the left. Uh, we're going to game two. Nick has chosen his own battlefield, yep. which it looks like Weapons Factory Alpha. Yes, yeah, so they'll let him play his his vehicles for minus one. First vehicle minus one. With the Afro on the board, that makes Hailfire Doors minus two. Yeah, it's which really is good. dirty. It's really dirty. Here comes Snow. So why Snow first? Um, I'm not sure why Snow first. Maybe it's his better chance to get um, a resource. Or maybe he has he doesn't like you in his hand. That's what it is. I bet he has he doesn't like you in his hand. See, there's a lot you can learn uh, without even knowing, right? But just understanding uh, that that kind of thing, where it's like, why are they putting their worst dice on the board? Right. Although I would have put the battle droid out for my worst dice. Yeah. But I that, think that's a Snoke maybe trigger the Aphrodite gets control. I'm not really sure. It doesn't look like he has that he doesn't like you, so I don't know what he was trying to do. Good games. Good games. We'll see. Yeah. He, he may well have, he doesn't like you. Right? So he's got the Holocron right start this time on the Super Commando, which in the Holocron... So he's using the Slave 1 ability just to get rid of it, which is smart, right? Yeah. So the Slave ability, you can reroll one of your yellow dice, and then remove a die showing that or less. Oh no, it's only exactly that. You see, he, he was able to put a Force Throw in and roll it in. Mm. Although, did he pay the one? Yeah, I think he probably paid the one. Yeah, he did. He's only got one. Yeah, one left. Okay, so it's exactly that value. It's exactly the value, yeah. If it was less than, yeah, it would be awesome. It would be insane. So the holocron comes up, goes on the other guy. That's so good. That's so good. I gotta imagine, like any holocron deck, right? If you get open with it, you're way, you're like you're that's when your deck it. fires. I yeah. mean, he did well without it. So for the, sure. Basically, if you're unfamiliar, the super commandos, every time you, the first time you play an upgrade on them, you can do a damage to a character. So the holocron's obviously great because you can bounce it by playing something mm -hmm. and then put it on your other one so two free exactly. damage on top of the holocron and, and he does the same thing with chance cube plays it for a damage rolls his guy out bounces it put it on puts it on the other guy rolls it out that's really strong i see why this deck's doing well yeah and it's got uh it's got a lot of help it's got 27 health which is nice um and it's got witch magic which is one of the strongest defensive cards in the game looks like he's resolving the battles right for one damage there Got three yeah, I think, I think he snoked it, so it's three. Three um, oh, three direct yeah. with the one range side. That's awesome. Savage. Snoke just getting in there. Freeze Reno. Yeah, these are some these are some really cool decks. What, what was your take on them while, while they're just kind of hanging out here? Health of the meta at this event. 
The setup's pretty good. There were a lot of vehicle decks, but on both sides. Snoke decks, um, the Wedge the Wedge Rose Hired Gun deck. There was the Launch Bay deck, the four-character uh, Launch Bay yeah, deck. that deck's crazy. There's um, the, the deck people call Drive-By Shooting, which is Ro Yoda Ezra Rookie Pilot. So there are a lot of vehicles and a lot of three-wide um, decks. I think uh, the game got a lot wider. There was not a lot of aggro. There were some Kylo, Snoke, Kylo Price that made the top 32. But there were not a lot of two-character decks. I mean, the mill and the vehicles both prey on two-character decks. And, and they're um, very popular, like Yeah. You said. And so one of the things that happened when they nerfed Sabine is that the mill decks rose up. And now it's sort of Sabine's like a mill... one of the decks that's fast enough to actually just To beat actually mill. be mill, right. And Cad Snoke, we found, it can't do it. It can't do it when you're three wide, so... Um, yeah, that's why my concern with that deck was just the consistency. Some games you just win automatically, but then like a lot of games you're going to be one on one with Snoke at the end. And that's yeah, a hard you don't, part. Yeah, Snoke, Snoke's rough alone, and if you don't have guns, if you yeah. if you go a turn without guns, you're you're looking to hurt. Um, the guys from the Destiny Council and um, the Minnesota meta, they've been playing this Yoda Cassian aggro deck with like um, the ambush guns. That's awesome. It, it's, it was my only loss in Swiss to um, Andrew Rothmel. It's it's a really strong deck, so I think that that could give. Both of these decks are run for its money, but he did lose to vehicles 0-2 in the top uh, the top 16. All right, Afro on eight damage here again, first I round. Know. First nine. nine. Yeah, this is. Um, We're not even done yet. Yeah, this is rough for for Nick once again. Um, you know, he got the slave one out, which is nice, but he didn't. He doesn't have his BT one um, engine. Oh, he does have dangerous maneuver in his hand, so he's going to be able to move that damage. Oh, and above great, above the really He's going to move the damage, there. draw a card. And who knows what this ends up resulting in. Um, doesn't look like he has any resources, so probably won't see anything too interesting. But he's got a Force Illusion in his hand, so that, that should keep Afra alive longer. Um, unfortunately, Force Illusion not great against those pings for one. Yeah, if but it's to... still pretty solid against these. They, have, they all have two sides, right, with yeah. Thousand's ability as well. Um, so, I mean, I think ideal here would be another Dangerous Maneuver. Mm -hmm. And also Force Illusion hitting the table? Force Illusion, he could get a crash landing, which would take a damage die off the table, put it on the bubble shield. There's a lot of good things he could have. Um, but he really needs to draw into his um, his BT-1 triple zero engine, or else he's going to fall too far behind again. Yeah, and even then he's going to have find resources to pay for it. Yeah. So He's got a tech team, he's got climate sensor ray, looks like another bubble shield in his hand. You can't right. see Jordan's hand, unfortunately. Here come the Mandos. Yeah. Attack of the Mandos. Siege of Mandalore. Yeah, it's cool. He's, he's going to activate that uh, character first because I, I would almost want to try to get the Holocron off the other one to play it down. Right, to do it again, yeah. Yeah. But here comes Snow. Looks like we've got a disrupt and. Double disrupt. Double disrupt. Getting value out of that commando before it's gone. And, and I understand that as well. He's got a force throw, so if you can get that special, mm -hmm. that's going to really shift the odds here in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. So we we probably will see. Um, I think you should play the Force Solution. This is talking about sequencing. If he, if Afra activates and gets a two range, two range, um, he won't have time to mitigate and drop the Force Solution. Yeah. So that, <laughs> a little crevice in the playmats there just stopped that nine dead. Dead killed it. Um, so that looks like an armored plating, I'm guessing, because it's an uh, upgrade with no dice. Yeah, yeah, okay, so he had an upgrade anyway. Man, this is rough. I, I'm, I'm, I feel like the, and this is the story, right? I mean, this this housing deck might be the only aggro deck that can actually do it right now. It's got three characters and it can still maintain the aggro setup. For sure. Um, and so I'm actually very curious, and we'll see if we get to see it or not, but to see that against those mill decks I was just seeing, because if, if it's if, fast enough, you can get around that curve with that, that mill deck. If he pulls it off, it's going to be very interesting. Because one of the ways to beat mill is to overwhelm it with dice. And if you're constantly putting these dice out, even if they're not amazing, it could simply be too much to mitigate. And with yeah. the Mother Talzin turning dice, that it adds that consistency. Looks like he burked again. He missed again? Yeah. Does he have hidden motive in his deck? Did I miss it? Um... Looking. No, nope. I miss I miss what the card was, but it, he didn't turn a die. Yeah, I think it's his chance cube. And or I could have blinked. Down. They're playing so fast. It's hard watching Destiny on this little screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the one ranged again from from the battle droid? That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> Is that little guy plugging away. Roger, Just Roger. Doing work, man. That's Nick. where, like, you know, I mean, like, 
it's, I guess you can't run three battle droids in the snow. That'd be awesome. Sick. Oh, he lived the dream. He rolled focus on the holocron die. <laughs> he lived the dream. <laughs> oh, so man, Slave just... He decides, Nick just decides not to drop the Force Illusion. He decides uh, Aphra's a lost cause. Without the droids, she's just really That's struggling. Crazy. That's an unfortunate. He's, he's way more in this game to me, though, than he was the last one. Yeah, he had a bunch of vehicles out last game, though. That That's the thing. He had the Hailfire. I mean, he's, still, he's got two resources here. Yeah, but it doesn't have anything good in his hand, though. No he's vehicle. He's three more here with that droid just doing the work. Um, so it's the kind of thing where, like, if you can get three to four resources and get something going, uh, feel your anger, get out of here. Removing the blank, too. That's such a savage move. <laughs> um, I think I think what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna see Nick wait for this guy for Jordan this guy for Jordan to claim and then he's gonna draw bubble shield and maybe um, or maybe the the damage sent the climate sensor ray yeah to try and start plugging away at that damage okay so there's tech team tech team and should see the climate sensor ray right behind it yeah I do. I don't. Think, I mean, you don't have enough health to play that, though, right? Well, he has the bubble shield, so we can put one on that and one on Snoke. Snoke is still really healthy. Um, and what he's going to... I mean, he has to do something. He can't not, not do any damage. So, this is a discard, and looks like a two-ranged. A discard could actually be very good, because he's wanting to reroll here with Snoke. Probably get to the resources to play something. Yeah. When Talzin, uh, when Talzin rolls hot, man, it's really hard to really hard to deal with her. She's so strong. She only has to roll half hot, right? Yeah. But she fixes the rest. Yeah, I mean, he's only got four four even, so. Um, oh, no, he doesn't go for the damage sensor. He's just the tech team's for next round. Looks like we got a, a shield or a resource and a focus. Yeah, resource and focus. <laughs> There's a discard. Yep, discards, bubble shield. Oh, that hurts, actually. It's probably better that he didn't hit the four solution. That's fair. I, I can get into that. <laughs> I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. You will try. All right, so he puts the two into the battle droid. So battle droid only has one more Snoke activation left. And really, he's, um, Jordan's going to be starting, you know, can first action do a damage to the battle droid, completely shut down the Snoke activation. And even if you do the Snoke, you're just Oh, oh no, crack up muscle. Yeah. yeah, that means one damage, and then the next turn, battle droid's just dead, side. yeah. Or, or activate the, the, the back of muscle. This is not looking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Duh. Man, a brutal deck. Heck of a card. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. This is all. This is one of those decks. that's like, there's so many good decks. It's impossible to play test everything. Oh, absolutely. Didn't, That's didn't, a cool part I, of game I know. Right I didn't know. We didn't give that deck a fair shake. We knew it could be good. Yeah, sure. It's just, how do you how do you have time to to play everything? Well, and I honestly feel like for me, the characters are they obviously help define what the deck is, but like. Ultimately, the 30 cards in this stack are way more important than the characters. And so, like, just look at the quality of cards that you're seeing out of that deck. Yeah. Yellow Blue Villain has, has the heat. Yeah, you have to just find the right configuration. And the funny thing is he has to leave some of the best yellow and blue cards on the on the bench. Yeah. Right? He doesn't like you. Uh, friends in low places. That's what I love on yeah, where we're at with this game. Because, you know, the standard size of a card pool now is going to be four to six sets always. Yeah. And so, like, the number of options that are available. And even something like Kyle's ability making you just forcibly look at other cards. Yeah. It's in a cool spot. Same thing with um, Afro. Like, you want to play Afro, you have to look at every single card in the meta to find out if there's anything that anything cool that deals you your own damage. That's when Nick found Climate Sensor Ray. And, you know, the interesting part of that is, like, with as quick as a deck like this can shut Afro out, now your whole deck is constructed around the character that's not there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying about characters, though. It's like, they're only around until yeah. your opponent deals with them. That's right. Yeah, and I mean, a so lot like of decks are built on, it? you know, keeping guys alive. Like, look at Sabine. Like, you play Impersonate, you play Second Chance, because it's all about keeping her alive. Your, your deck falls apart. Yeah. But with Mandos, it doesn't matter if one of them dies, because the rest of them can pick up the slack. Well, and it's like, do you want to kill the Mandos first, or Talzin? There's, That's a bad choice. Yeah, it's a bad choice. It's a choice you don't want to have to make. the Mandos get free damage, but Talzin is consistent. So it's just, ooh, double blanks. There with the Archangel. Two shields, it looks like. Yeah, tough to say. There's the Holocron for a free damage. This is not looking, I'm sorry to say, this is not looking good for 
Nick. For NJ Cuenca. Well, I'll say this. Nick's had an amazing run. He only lost one game. Um, he, I'm really proud of him. He did a really great job this weekend. Yeah, I mean, top four. This was like a 270, 280 person event. Yeah. I think it's one of the biggest destiny events ever. Um, so top, top four is not anything to sneeze at. No, it's top sure. eight. You know what I mean? It'll be interesting because two of our teammates are playing the mill mirror and the other one, and like it'll be cool to have a non. I like aggro versus mill. Yeah. That's a really good final. Yeah. That's actually almost exactly what you want. Now we yeah. just need a combo deck. That's right. The, the launch the bay deck. Get yeah. the launch bay deck going. How high did the launch bay deck go? So there's a deck. Uh, Me top, top 32. Uh, watching. It's basically like a turn one or a one turn launch bay, kill all their characters. Deck. Yeah. You draw your whole deck. You draw your whole deck round one, and then you turn the launch bay die with 3PO to like the range side, and you and salvo it, so you do like 15 damage to each character. Kill them all. And it made the top cut. It made That's the top cool. cut. That's cool. I mean, I like the idea of combo decks existing, but just not being good enough to ever crack the top eight. Yeah, maybe not. Um, well, I don't mind the combo decks cracking the top eight if if they're not on round one. Like. You shouldn't be able, even Magic wouldn't let you combo on round one. Yeah, well, if they do, they, they get rid of it. Yeah, they get rid of it. All right, we're rolling out here. I, I honestly feel like, even with Force Illusion, it would take a Christmas Day miracle for Nick to pull out of this. Yeah, he's down, I mean... Just considerably. Three health left on one Mando, and eight health on Talzin and the other Mando, so... Yeah, he's down 19 health to nine. Yeah, it's, that's, that's it's, pretty hard to It's tough staying engaged. But, I mean, that's in the like thing, the, it's one, one play at a time. I guess we could talk about, like, what it would take. Um, I think it probably, I just think Nick drew no Hailfires, Nick drew no, um, none of the Afro Droids, and that's his whole damage engine. And if you yeah. can't get that online, like, you're not going to survive. Going for the chance key, we've got the blank, so it and stays the, and in. To be honest, that's kind of interesting about the, the Talzic Commando deck, is it doesn't care what it draws, it just needs to draw upgrades, which it has a plethora of. And as long as you draw something, your damage engine is online. Yeah. So it's way more consistent than Nick's deck. For sure. Well, and the thing about Nick's deck is that probably in a lot of matchups, especially against Mill, right, you have time. You have super, yeah, have a ton of time. You have turns, right? Turns climate and turns climate Center A versus Mill, where you're dealing them incredible. damage and yeah. they're not dealing you damage is so good. Like, so the vehicle deck and the Mill deck, I think the Nick's deck is great, which yeah. is why he's here, right? Yeah, for and sure. And then this aggro deck, if an aggro deck is good enough, that's a trick. And I think the three character wide is the important element of this. And it has ways of doing fixing dice and just offering consistent damage with those Mandos. So, um, I, I'm pretty confident that's here to stay unless we see a strong point boost from some of these characters. Yeah, and it, it could happen. Um, so we get the power action on the Slave one. Can't tell what it will, what the Archangel die rolled. But it looks like he's choosing what to remove, so we must have an option. I mean, I see 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the board. Uh, it looks like a one range side, so. So going away, the throw is just. Yep. Throw is one of those classic cards that every time I hit the table, I'm reminded of how good it actually is. Yeah. When you get to rem remove one of their dice and do that damage, that two to six damage swing is. That's the, so talk about awakenings cards. That's the classic awakenings uh, starter deck card. So there's Witch Magic, one of my favorite cards in Destiny. Just heal three. So it's now one of the best cards in Destiny. One of the best when cards. When it hits, in trilogies, it makes me want to punch a wall. I'm, I bet. Like a limited card pool, right? You work really hard to do the damage, and then they're just like, yeah, I'll take yeah, I'll six just, of it off the board. Yeah. Thanks. It's really, really good. I think it's I think it's a reason. Some people, There's like two schools of thought on how to build Talzin decks. It's like 50-50 or 26-4. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of the 26 uh, odd cards, four or even cards, just, just because Witch Magic online is so strong. Yeah. I'm in the two to four uh, even cards slot. Yeah, I think in this deck, the four zero cost upgrades are too good. Yeah. And then in any other deck, um, two he doesn't like you, and two um, hidden motive or probe, depending on what you want to do, is, is really good. All right. All right, here we go. So Nick's going to play the Hailfire, take a damage. And There's so much damage to do. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm one for the Cinderella story, so let's see what we got here. All right, let's see what, let's see what lines he can take. <laughs> Right. Free damage. How about that? On the van braces, which we saw from Dude, the. Um, when every upgrade you have in your deck turns into also do an automatic damage when you play this. Yeah, it's a cro every every upgrade's a cross guard lightsaber. That's absurd. Yeah, I love cross guard lightsaber too. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Well, it's it's snipe my Sabina worlds to kill her out of nowhere. Yeah. I thought I had it locked. 
That hurts, dude. Rip. It still hurts. I Old love wounds. it. I love it. That's, it's really good. I love that idea, too, that it works on Kylo like that, yeah. particularly. No, I, I, I honestly thought we would see more mechanics like that. Like the Ray Saber, Kylo Saber, Phasma Blaster, Ray Bot, Poe Blaster. Out of that, right? Like, even the Grievous cards from this set. That's true. Kind of I just want more there. of it. Oh, I that totally like agree. old school Star Wars CCG only plays on this character type stuff. I yeah. love that stuff. I, I like it being more like you get a bonus for playing on this. Yeah, character. yeah. Or like the the event cards that are just easier to play with that character and yep. play. Yeah. Um, clandestine operation was huge for me all, all weekend. Yeah, I would love like a, a Yoda's lightsaber that's also good on Yaddle. <laughs> Man, you're getting deep in that uh, we, prequels. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the prequels to take over Destiny. Pod racing, it's already begun. It has already begun. The race has begun. You can see it's really cool. You can't see this on the camera here, but there's a crowd building around this game. Uh, yeah, people are loving it. People are, uh, I think we're going to see a big crowd around the finals for sure. Yeah, this is just the semis, so I can't even imagine. I'm excited to see it. So, there is a way. I mean, he's gonna have to spike someone off the board. Unfortunately, Nick's deck just doesn't make spike damage. It's like all indirect. So. He's gonna have to like go out of a turn with like one health left, and then just get really lucky on like an archangel. On the, yeah, the archangel hold. We ended up um, cutting the partnerships just because we wanted some more high impact cards. Um, it's definitely a good card, but I see why you like it's just not quite enough. Right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, you, like the vehicle deck is so slow. It's hard to like want to run that tempo. So we hit on the, the Talzin, uh, Talzin ability. We're getting the I power mean, action for the Slave 1. He needs it to be a 2. It looks like it was a 1. Yeah, it was a 1. So he gets get... rid of the Holocron instead. Yeah. And now he's at 4 health. <laughs> the Motley Crew just showed up. Steven and Robert. Just me and them. Ragamuffins. Alright, so we're, we're down to... Four health on snow to what is this? Six plus seven, thirteen plus six, nineteen health on the thousand size? Yeah, it's it's nineteen to four. It's not not feeling good. Not feeling good for the and then for the, just for one free damage. Crew. Man, this deck is ridiculous. I'm gonna go on record as saying it's ridiculous. OP, please nerf Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. can you please can, nerf? Can we get an immediate balance of the force update? Yeah. No, I don't think it's OP. I just think that this is exactly what an aggro deck has to be to exist right now. It makes me sad. I really dig two character decks, and I feel like I they've gone the way of the dinosaur. There, it's it's rough. I know that every time I faced a two character deck yesterday, I was like, I felt really good. Yeah, it's just like, all right, well, you can't beat me. Cool. You just there's too few dice for me to mitigate. What do you think would have to happen for two character decks to find their way back into the game? I think. Wrong. Okay. We'll talk not, about that. Not true. Later. Um, I oof. I don't know. I think that um. <laughs> I think they just have to make these smaller uh, characters, the, the non-uniques, cost more. The premium has to be on the health. Like you, you should have to pay a higher cost for a body. for more health for a body, exactly. Yeah, and I think the low cost of the bodies means the redeploy assets get insane, right? Or like you do it with the vehicles because the vehicles are essentially redeployed. Yeah. Um, but I, I like, so one of the things I like about Snoke is his second die only costs two squad points. Whereas, um, you know, a lot of characters, their, their second die, or like Cassian's second die costs four points because it's so strong. Yeah. So they obviously have a formula there um, that they need to adjust because, like, look what you can do with 27 health. You just live forever against indirect damage. Yeah. And, of course, indirect damage, that's the one thing it suffers from is that right. it needs to build up and there's so much that it overwhelms. Yeah, and like we're going to see in the finals, um, 27 health, and it, uh, very often, like, I, I got the shields every game I played all weekend. Um, against damage decks with my mill deck and so starting with 29 health and only after churning through their deck and like Anakin's pod racer being so strong that the, the added health from the three wide like the Yoda Cassian mill deck is very good but the added health just makes the the three wide so so good it buys you a couple extra turns right and there you have it huge congrats to Jordan he'll be moving on to the finals 2-0 uh, do we have a status update on the other game yeah time um, Adam Ramsey's up 1-0 to uh, Andrew Cox 